Hello class, welcome to another science lesson. In the previous lessons, we've been looking at traditional methods of preserving food. And so far, we've looked at three traditional methods of preserving food. And these are smoking, dry, and use of honey. Today, we are going to look at other two traditional methods of preserving food. We will start by using low temperatures. But before we go to use of low temperatures, can we just remind ourselves what we said about drying and smoking? Why do we dry? Or why is smoke passed over meat and fish? Somebody tell us. Very good. We dry our food so as to remove excess moisture. And remember we also said that when smoke is passed over meat or fish, it removes the moisture that might be in the fish or the smoke. The, sorry, in the fish or the meat. Hence, inhibiting the reproduction of the bacteria that bring about rotting or that may cause the food to go bad. In today's lesson, we are going to look at using low temperature. Can somebody just say what he or she thinks about this method of preserving food using low temperatures? Mm -hmm. Good. It is good to note that the bacteria, the fungi that bring about rotting do not survive where there are low temperatures. So traditionally, foods like milk were preserved using this method. Fresh milk, for example, may stay for two days without going sour if kept cool. How was it done? In other words, how was milk preserved using low temperatures? The milk should be put in a bottle and then placed in a container of cold water. A clean cloth with its ends touching the water should be used to cover the milk. Why do you think the clean cloth was used here? Remember we've said the clean cloth's ends was, was meant to touch the water and in that process the water was to rise up the clean cloth using the capillary action. In class 5, we dealt with soil capillary, soil capillarity, sorry. Can somebody tell us what he or she understands by the term capillarity? Yes? Good. Capillarity is the rising of water. So when the clean cloth is used, with its ends touching the water, the, the water is sucked up by capillary action, hence wetting the whole cloth. The large wet surface area maximizes evaporation, cooling the cloth, the air beneath it, and hence the milk. And for that, the milk will go for two to three days without going sour because we said the bacteria that might bring about the food that might make the food to go the milk to go bad or to go sour do not survive in very low temperatures traditionally they also in, in used to they also used another method still under low temperatures they improvised their own fridge and this was not a fridge, it was called a charcoal cooler. What is a charcoal cooler? A charcoal cooler is a storage device similar to a refrigerator. It is used to preserve food in areas where there is no electricity. It uses charcoal and water to remain cool. Water drips constantly onto the charcoal, which being 
porous means that it presents a large weighted surface area. This maximizes the evaporation and hence the cooling effect on the cooler and its contents. And food can be stored in this charcoal cooler for long without going bad. This is because it inhibits the bacteria that bring about the food rotting. We are going to look at another method of preserving food, that is a traditional method, and this is salting. Remember, we've already, we've already looked at use of low temperatures, and under use of low temperatures, we've identified two methods they used in low temperatures. Now, let's look at another traditional method, which is salting. Somebody, can you tell us what you think about this method? Yes, very good. As the name suggests, in this method, salt is used to preserve the food. Which types of food can be used, can be preserved using this method? Yes, very good. The meat and fish are good examples of foods that can be preserved using the salting method. But remember, vegetables can also be preserved using this method. How is it done? How is salting done? For example, let's take an example of fish. Once you get your fish, the first thing you're supposed to do is to remove the scales and the offals. Remember, in our previous lesson on smoking, we talked about offals. Class, can one of you tell us what offals are? Very good. Offals are the, in the inner parts of the fish. So, once you get your fish, remove the scales, remove the offals, and then get a box. At the bottom of that box, make small holes. I know some of you are asking, why small holes? These small holes will be allowing water that will be dripping from the fish to go to pass out of the box. Now, after removing the scales and offals, a layer of refined or crude salt is placed and spread in the box which has holes at the bottom. A layer of fish is then placed over the salt. The fish is covered with a layer of salt. Class, are we together? Remember we said, after removing the scales and offals, a layer of crude or unrefined salt is placed and spread in a box or in the box which has holes at the bottom. After which, a layer of fish is then placed over the salt. The fish is covered with a layer of salt. Another layer of fish is placed on the first layer and covered with salt. A layer of fish alternating with a layer of salt is repeated until the box is full. Why do we use salt? Salt makes the fish dry by removing water. Remember, the importance of salting is to remove the water that might be in the food. The water from the fish drains out through the holes at the bottom of the box. Salting is also used to preserve vegetables such as French beans, green peas, leeks, and many other vegetables. It is good to note that 
Salt discourages or inhibits the growth of bacteria which spoil vegetables. Vegetables which are preserved by salting method are also heated and stored in sterilized containers such as large bottles which are then sealed. What is to sterilize? Yes? Good. To sterilize means to kill or remove bacteria and germs. The vegetables can last a long time without getting spoiled. Class, we've looked at salting. It is good to note that when using the salting process, the salting method of preserving food, the major aim of the salt is to remove or drain water from the food so as to inhibit the bacteria that bring about the food rotting. That is the end of the lesson today. But before I wind up the lesson, please answer the following questions. Number one, why do we use salt in food preservation? Number two, why do you think food preservation in low temperatures was used in the traditional days? And finally, number three, why is it that the, when preserving fish in a box, you, the box must be having holes in it? That marks the end of our today's lesson. How many minutes?